Uh, good evening, my name is Martin. Um, uh, I'm going to give a statistic statistical talk uh, about uh, uh, space-time disease outbreak detection. And uh, if, uh, if we have an individual case of polio or anthrax is an outbreak in itself, and we don't know any, need any statistics, so what I'm concerned about here is we have individual reports of individual cases of disease, and we want to see is it really an outbreak or is it just sporadic disease happening. Um, there are many different potential sources for disease outbreak detection. Uh, I think it's going in the wrong order here. Can I go back? Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so there are many sources of uh, noise in, in data. And... Uh, um, uh, for example, if somebody's out traveling, then they will come home and they go to the doctor, but it's not reflective where they live, and nobody knew that they were living far away. Uh, another example is if you leave, I think it should be moving at some point, if you leave your food too long in the refrigerator, uh, that's an outbreak for you and your family, but it's not really an outbreak in the community setting, so it can also be sporadic. Um, uh, another type of noise is like in Twitter, for example, uh, somebody might use words uh, like vomit, not because they were vomiting, <laughs> and uh, of course, unless there was an outbreak of uh, vomiting outside of staples yesterday, I'm not sure. There are also other types of noise in the data, such as seasonal trends. Uh, there are day or week trends. And uh, uh, another thing is that the same person might go to the doctor more than once, or the same, per the same person might Twitter once, more than once, or their friends may retwitter the things. And to have seven people going to the doctor is different from one people going to seven doctors. So one way to deal with all this noise in the surveillance system is to increase the threshold. That's a very common way of doing it, but it's not a good way because you throw out the baby with, uh, with the water. <laughs> uh, so the key thing uh, in terms of statistics is to maximize the signal to noise ratio. And there are different ways that are important to do this. And one is that you want to use uh, episodes of disease rather than individual encounters. Uh, you have to account for any missing data that's there. And what's very important is to try to adjust for the purely temporal variation in disease or the purely spatial variation that exists. And uh, there are different ways of doing this. Here we compared the same statistical method using encounters versus episodes, and the number of signals went from 174 to 23, so there's a huge problem if you use encounters versus episodes. Uh, this uses two different uh, modeling of spatial and temporal noise. The first one does it parametrically, trying to model it very nicely. The second one does it non-parametrically, just uh, uh, adjusting for any temp purely temporal, any purely spatial, and there's a big difference in the number of signals. Uh, so we have tried to do this for electronic health data, and we're using a space-time permutation scan statistics that only uses case data. It adjusts for purely spatial and temporal variation. It adjusts for, uh, uh, for the multiple testing or looking at many different uh, locations and times of potential outbreaks. And uh, we have tried this in different settings. Uh, one is in California where we compared 22 different data streams from electronic health records. Uh, and we found that, uh, for example, we had one signal of a stool culture order, uh, which by chance would happen less than once every 27 years. There were 18 observed cases, 3.4 expected. Now, this is not necessarily an outbreak. It could be a doctor just uh, ordering a lot of stool culture for some reason, uh, but it could be worth an investigation. And, uh, another one is a salmonella outbreak with six cases. Uh, Five of these were serotyped, and they all had uh, the same Solomon or Thompson serotype, which is very rare. So this was clearly uh, uh, an outbreak with the same source. So in conclusion, uh, in disease outbreak detection, it's critically important to adjust for the noise. Uh, 
to minimize false alarms and get a good signal to noise ratio, and uh, that can be done, uh, but it depends on the data source. Thank you very much.